just want to tell everybody that there are so many signs going on around the world that prove the authenticity of Scripture that uh, tonight's Bible study is going to be very important to tune into. And I want to read it. I want to start off by reading a scripture to you that's not in Revelation chapter 12, but does give us some focus as the body of Christ. I want to read this to you right now, okay? Let me do that right now. Okay. This is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much more as ye see the day approaching. We see the day approaching, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Not everybody sees the day approaching, but we do. What day are we talking about to the uh, public out there? We're talking about, first of all, the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, which means Jesus coming in the clouds, in the sky, to take his bride away before all of the judgments start coming down on the earth. And then we're talking about the second coming, which happens literally like seven years after the rapture. But we see all of these things are, are coming to pass. We're going to be talking about some great signs tonight. And in Hebrews, though, 1025, um, Paul is exhorting us, to, especially today, as we see the day approaching, he does not want us forsaking the assembling of, of ourselves together in a manner of some is, but exhorting one another. It means to build each other up. It means to encourage each other, to hang on, to remain patient, wait for the Lord's perfect timing of everything to happen. Sister Diane, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And I wasn't able to tag everybody that I wanted to. I have restrictions on my account. You know, what else is new? That just seems to happen to me a lot. Um, it's probably because of the topics that, I, I'm, <laughs> that I'm mentioning quite frequently. What can I do? Just keep moving forward, you know, but when the Bible study is done, if anybody wants to share this video, it's great. Um, if not, that's okay as well. But I just invite you to get comfortable. And if you wanna hang out with me for a little bit and you're, you're cool with that, you can be a Christian, you can be a non-Christian, you can be of a different faith. If you wanna hang out with us, it's fine. Like I am perfectly happy for you to hang out and listen to this Bible study. We're going to be in Revelation chapter 12 this evening. And Revelation chapter 12, guys and gals, is about a great sign in the heavenlies, okay? Jesus said there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars before his second coming. We've had lots of signs. And what's interesting about this sign that's happening right now, uh, that we're going to be, I should say, that did happen, uh, actually, several years ago. We're going to talk about that a little bit, okay? It's going to be very, very interesting. I think you people are going to get something out of this, hopefully, before we're done. I hope so. We are going to talk about a few things after I get done with the meat of the message. We're going to talk about uh, true revival and the need for true revival in our country and around the world and what that revival looks like, okay? Not with this... Uh, one World Religious Center that they just opened uh, recently over in uh, over in the Middle East, the Chrislam Center. It's not what their it's not their message, guys. God has something to say about true revival, and we're going to discover what that is in the scriptures. We're not going to rely on some teacher uh, or some what I would like to say a false prophet is going to tell us what revival looks like or how it's supposed to be or the revival's finished now, we're gonna close our doors because we have to go back to normal, something like that. No, we're gonna see what the Bible has to say about revival, but the meat of the message is Revelation chapter 12. Speaking of that One World Religious Center that happened, opened uh, recently, a few days ago, I got a notification from Watchman Adam, and Watchman Adam had sent a, a, a Twitter video out from one of the people that were following him, there was a, a sign in Israel that happened one day before the grand opening of that One World Religious Center. And it was, um, it's what people call a blood moon. And obviously the blood is not literal blood, but it just, it looks red because of an eclipse. But here's the interesting thing about this, uh, this particular blood moon that they had in Israel, the day before that One World Religious Center opened. 
Good, good evening, Debbie. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Anybody that's uh, able to see me, it's just, you know, I would have loved to have tagged the family, but I just couldn't because they've restricted me. So, you know, uh, just give a shout out to people that are in the group or if you want to share it now, it's fine. Uh, it's going to go where it's supposed to go, you know. But uh, what happened with this, what was very interesting about this blood moon, which is not real blood, but it's a red moon. It was a red moon. God uses signs, okay? We're going to read about that in Revelation chapter 12 here in a minute. He uses signs to talk to humanity. And here was the fascinating thing about this moon that happened the day before the religious center opened was that the astronomers, everybody, nobody knew, they had no clue about this eclipse. They had no idea that this blood moon was going to show up and it showed up over Israel. So it was out of nowhere that this blood moon happened and the astronomers were completely taken off of, off guard. The scientists were taken off guard. Nobody, nobody saw it coming. And it was, uh, it was just fascinating. And so I can share that video a little bit later if you guys want to see it. Um, Watchman River Adam, okay, if you type him in YouTube, he just made the video like, I think it was day before yesterday. So what am I, why am I bringing that up? It's a sign. And, and the topic tonight is a little bit about signs. The signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, which Jesus told us, that would be happening before his second coming. And it's going to be really, really great to read Revelation chapter 12 because we're going to read about some signs, okay? I mean, these signs, uh, that's, that's, that's the thing. That's what I, I want people to understand is when they see these strange things or things are happening in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and in the constellations, God is speaking to humanity and he makes it very clear that's how he does it. And we're going to read that in Revelation chapter 12. So that blood moon over Israel, that eclipse about that one world religion center opening the very next day was a sign. Now, why are all of these things happening? Why does the world seem to be getting more crazy by the day? Let's start reading Revelation chapter 12. Okay. Now we're here because we're here because of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much more as as we see the day approaching i'll repeat this what day question what day the uh, the answer is the pre-tribulation rapture of the church first and then the second coming of jesus christ if you look at two thousand years of humanity guys and then you're looking at about seven to eight years if the rapture was to was to happen this year we don't know but if it was seven years is eight years is a drop in the bucket compared to when jesus was crucified he was in the grave for three days and rose again on the third day, resurrected, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father like 2,000 years ago. This is nothing. This is, guys, like, watch this. I'm, when we get into this, watch, watch these signs. This is why I know that we are so close to the second coming of Jesus and first in the, uh, the rapture. Why, David? Why, are, why do you think we're so close? Is there, is there like a, a, a reason because of the signs? That's why I know because of these signs, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. Let me share this with you. This was this happened. This was a sign, September twenty third, two thousand seventeen, and this was the year that my dad passed away. So I'll never forget that year. That was like one of the hardest years of my life, except for losing my mom. But I'll never forget two thousand seventeen. In two thousand seventeen, there was a great sign that happened in the constellations and we're going to read it. it the stars actually lined up to look like what we're about ready to read in revelation chapter 17. now if you're asking me as a bible student what what did that mean what happened in, in 2017 before we start reading revelation chapter 12 i'm just going to give you my um analysis of what i believe happened in september of 2017. What happened was the great sign of Revelation chapter 12, but it's a sign saying um, that, hey, time is running out. It's gonna get, it's gonna get more difficult and more um, uh, intense. All right, so ever since from 2017, we're marching forward, 18, 19, 20, we had COVID, we had a lot of things. We have threats of nuclear war now. 
We have a lot of things we can talk about. I'll leave that to some other ministries. Where do I want to go with you guys tonight, the family? What I want to be with you is in the scriptures. I can read you endless headlines of the signs of the times. I, there's ministries that are really good at that. And I, I do, sometimes I defer to them. Sometimes I'll read articles of what's going on. I mean, we had that crazy gathering over in Ohio and, and places like Kentucky and stuff where it looked like a genuine revival and everybody started fighting and arguing over it. It's a sign of deception, you know, but I, there's ministries that are really good at, at exposing the evil and, and all of that, you know? And so like, we'll talk about that at the very end, but I want to stick with Revelation 12. And what I want to do for the audience tonight is I want to take you to the scriptures so that you see these, see that the Bible is the word of God. Like it's actually telling us what's about ready to happen. Okay, so let me start reading. Let me do that. In Revelation chapter 11, we read the other day, before I start reading this, I'm just going to say, there was, there was singing in heaven, okay, and John saw it. And, and what they were singing is that now the nations are going to be turned over to the, to the true and rightful owner. The Lord Jesus Christ is getting ready to return to this earth. So everybody was singing, okay, that Jesus is coming back. That's what we're all, we're all going to be singing that. When, when this world is going through the seven-year tribulation, and then the judgments are starting to pound the earth, right? And then all of a sudden, when some of these, right in the middle of it, it was like, we start singing this song because we know that Jesus is getting ready to mount up and come back to this earth. Uh, that was the final thought in Revelation chapter 11, but here we are in 12. Now here's what Revelation 12 says. Think about September 2017, okay? You guys can look that up. I can send you lots of references of the constellations lining up for this, this prophecy. It was a sign in the heavenlies. It was a sign in our constellations. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. And I'm going to explain this, okay? So hang with me. And on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and, uh, and in pain gave birth. This woman clothed in the sun, ladies and gentlemen, is Israel. And she gave birth to Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago to die for the sins of the world. Um, so this is a double prophecy. This is a double prophecy saying that this happened 2,000 years ago, that this woman gave birth to a child and she cried out in labor and gave birth. Well, guess what? Israel is pregnant again. Ever since 1948, when Israel was declared a nation in a day, what, what a prophet Isaiah told us, let me give you, let me, let me show you what Isaiah says about Israel being born in a day, giving birth in a day. Watch this. Um, hang with me. It gets, it gets more interesting, okay? Okay, here we go. This is Isaiah 66, 8. And I want to read it. The reason why I'm pulling it up instead of just trying to quote it to you off the top of my head is because I want you to read this with me in King James, okay? All right. This is, why, why do people, why are, why are we so confident about the second coming of Jesus Christ coming to this earth like a second time? Because we look at the scriptures and we see these, events and these prophecies that God said would happen in the Bible and they're happening now and they happened already. In Isaiah 66, 8, Isaiah predicts the rebirth of Israel in 1948. He says, who hath heard of such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in a day or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Okay, so <laughs> here's, the, here's the deal. The deal is Revelation 12.1 is talking about that event of, about Israel and bringing forth Jesus Christ, okay? The nation was born in a day in Isaiah 66 and then the woman gave birth to the child, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus died for the sins of the world. This is a, a, a gigantic event for all of human history, all of mankind that Jesus did that for us. But this is what Revelation's talking about. But Revelation 12 is also talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ because here's why, and stay with me, we're gonna keep reading. 
Because these signs, as we keep going forward, Jesus uh, compared as a woman in labor. The woman in labor, it gets more intense as we go along. So the, the one thing that I can tell you, I can't nail down the date of the rapture for you, but what I can do, I can guarantee you, based on what the Bible tells me, is that it's going to get more intense, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to get, the, the, the craziness in this world is until the rapture happens for, for believers, it's gonna get more intense and more crazy until the Lord breaks through the sky and revelate, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. He's going to break through the sky eventually here, sooner than later, most likely, and call his people home to be with him. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Those who have died on before us, they're not in a soul sleep. So don't mistake them being like asleep. When the Bible talks about sleep, it's talking, of, the Bible's mentioning their physical bodies being asleep in the grave, but their spirit and the soul is in heaven immediately with the Lord. So they come back with the Lord to receive their glorified bodies at the rapture of the church, which is we will be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. So they go first out of the grave and then we are immediately behind them we meet the Lord in the sky, we get our glorified bodies and we go to heaven to be with the Lord and we'll always be with him. We will always be with him. But these signs are, this is what it's saying here. And then when we are, when the restrainer is removed off of the earth, as it, as it says in the book of Thessalonians, it says the restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit holding back the evil. When the restrainer is taken out of the way, then the Antichrist, who is the son of perdition, comes forward and he is going to be Mr. Fix-It-All, trying to tell us the whole world that, you know, he's going to right the ship of the craziness. And when we continue on in the book of Revelation, we're going to build a case for China. We're going to build a case for Russia. And we're going to build a case for the destiny of the United States of America as well in here. So hang, hang with me on that, okay? But right now in Revelation 12, we're talking about this great sign. In verse 3, another sign appeared in heaven. Signs, 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 signs. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, here we, here's another sign in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. You know, these Satanists, they like to have goats with the, all of these little insignias on the goat representing Satan and Satanism. They're mimicking um, what the Bible describes as that dragon. Now, the great red dragon, to me, I interpret it with these um, seven heads and ten horns, is this is that Satan is going to be having ex exercising his authority over certain nations. Which nation do you all know that has, is their sign is the red dragon? Do you guys know who the dragon is in the book of Revelation? Which nation uses that insignia? It's China. China uses that insignia as the dragon for their country. Just something to think about, okay? Why is China in the news so much? Because Satan is controlling that government over there. Let's keep going. Satan drew his tail. He, uh, his tail uh, drew a third of the stars of heaven. Stars, oftentimes in scripture, ladies and gentlemen, refer to angels. And in this case, fallen angels. Satan drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them down to the earth. Now let's stop there for a second. Let's go back to September of, of uh, 2017. I think that sign in heaven was God telling the earth that Satan is gonna draw, draw um, all of those fallen angels down to this earth and they're gonna deceive people with UFOs, with strange sights in the, in the sun, the moon and the stars, which Jesus said we would be seeing. And then it's gonna get more evil and more evil and more wicked. Let's keep reading. Hi Linda, good to see you sister. Um, Diane, have a good night, sister. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> now listen to this. When, when those stars fell down, those fallen angels, um, Satan threw them to the earth, the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth. Now what does this mean? Was this past tense or was this future tense? It's actually both. Satan did everything he could to try to make sure Jesus did not go to the cross. Okay, it's a double prophecy. So what we're seeing in Revelation 12, the same thing is going to happen all over again. He's going to try to prevent Jesus from coming back a second time. Remember what I had mentioned in the Bible studies in the past. In Ecclesiastes chapter one, 
it's a huge, to me, it's such a huge piece of the prophetic puzzle that Solomon told us. He said, there's nothing new under the sun. What's happened before will happen again. Show me something new. He goes, it's already happened in the past. So like for me as a student, I'm so like attuned to that when I see these, like when I read passages like this, I'm yet, yes, that's happened in the past. Okay, Satan tried to prevent Jesus from going to the cross. He's gonna try to prevent him from coming back a second time. Okay, and all of these fallen angels are coming down a deceiving man, you know, with UFOs, with all kinds of craziness. You know, it's gonna get crazier as we go along, guys. However long the Lord decides to tarry until he comes for his church. Listen to this. And the dragon stood before the woman, that's Israel. Satan stood before Israel, who was ready to give birth. It's always talking about a woman in labor all the time. That's what I'm telling you guys. Try to remember that as, as a student. You know, Don't let your eyes get uh, people distract you here and distract you there. Just remember what the Bible says about a woman in labor and the labor pains because it, the Bible continually mentions the second coming of Jesus Christ being like a woman in labor with the labor pains. And it's it, the Bible's talking about it again here. Okay? Um, the, Israel was ready to give birth um, but Satan wants to devour her child as soon as it was born. That happened in the past. It's going to happen again. She, there, it, Satan is going to persecute Israel. It's going to be the worst time in, in Israel's history coming up very soon. You've got to pray for these poor people in Israel. It's going to be really rough for them, guys. Um, she, which is Israel, bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Come on, Lord, we want you to come. That's what I'm looking forward to. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Um, that was when Jesus was, was, when he was crucified, when he was killed, he was buried and he rose again on the third day and he ascended to heaven after he spent time with his apostles and disciples and all the followers. He spent time with them. I think it was for like, I want to say, um, Somebody might know this answer right off the top of their head. It's in scripture. I want to say it was for many days that he was hanging out with his disciples before he ascended to heaven. And her child was caught up to, to God in his throne. That's Jesus. Then the woman fled into the wilderness. This is, this is Selah Petra, okay? This is when the Antichrist is going to be trying to exterminate the Jews. And, he's, and God is going to prepare a place for them in Petra. This is uh, modern day Jordan. Keep an, eye, keep an eye on the relations with Jordan and Israel right now. Um, they're friendly, okay? Jordan is the um, caretakers for the Temple Mount. And so they're always talking about all the time, like, don't let this guy or these people go on the Temple Mount. You're going to make the Muslims mad. Well, that's Jordan is, are the caretakers for that area there, okay? So just kind of remember the relationship between Israel and Jordan because that's Sela Petra. That's where the Jews are going to flee. They're going to flee there. God's going to prepare a place for them to be safe from the Antichrist, who's controlled by Satan. I know I'm reeling a lot of information off for you, but I just, you know, when I remember, when I remember from my studies in the past and now and everything, I want to just give you as much as I can while I'm here. Um, one thing I want to mention as well, I did this the other day when it came to the locusts in Revelation chapter 9. We did that study, and then I moved on to 10 and 11, and then I doubled back to Revelation 9 again because God showed me something else. And I did that. Okay, so I came on and almost double backed like a video, a part two of Revelation 9, because I wanted to show you who that fallen angel was that was uh, in control of those locusts. They're going to torture people. They're not going to eat anything. Locusts live to eat, you know, but these supernatural locusts are going to be attacking people that's their only purpose and it's just it's going to be bad but i god showed me something about that fallen angel so I, I went back on a video the other day and talked about it so i might double back when i go through revelation 12 and i get to 13 and 14 and 15 i might double back to 12 if god shows me something else um why why would i do that why would i not just finish the book of revelation and be done and move on to something else is because I'm trying to let God guide me in these studies so that you all understand. It's like when he shows me something, if I need to double back, I will. Because the hour is very short and I don't know exactly when. That's right, Debbie, Apollo, Apollyon. I think it's Apollyon and um, in Hebrew, it's Abaddon. 
But in uh, Amos chapter 7, 1, in the Septuagint uh, translation of the Old Testament, that's Greek, the Greek translation, he's called Gog, King Gog. That was such an eye-opener to me, that Gog, Gog, that fallen angel Gog, whom the Bible in, the, in um, Revelation in chapter 9 calls him in Greek, Apollyon, and in the Hebrew, it's Abaddon. So he has different names, okay, depending on which language that you're reading it out of. But when you go to the Septuagint in, it would be like if I read the New Testament in Greek and the Old Testament in Greek, right? There's secrets there in that language. And so, you know, um, let's, let me give you this example. I don't want to rabbit trail for too long, but it's worth mentioning. Lucifer is Satan. That was his original name in heaven was Lucifer. He was a cherubim angel before the throne of God. When he rebelled against God, God kicked him out and his name was changed to Satan, which is adversary. So there's no contradiction when it comes to these angels. Their names can be changed as well. Okay, so like, but in the Septuagint version, which is interesting to me, in Greek, it's, it's Gog. And Gog is that fallen angel. It's a prince chief demon or, a, you know, whatever you want to call him. It's not Putin. <laughs> These angels, ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 need, I need the audience to understand this is so important. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Jesus spent his time casting devils out of people. Okay, so when you look at King Gog, that prince in, Revel, I'm sorry, in Ezekiel chapter 38, it's not Putin and it's not a Russian leader. It's, a, it's actually a fallen angel, but that fallen angel is controlling the mind of that, of that leader in Russia. And he's controlling the minds of the generals in Russia and the people in general. And you don't think that's not a, a possibility. It is absolutely a, a reality. In scripture, that's what is really going on. Now, if you want to ask me, how does that all happen scientifically? I couldn't even begin to tell you how a fallen angel or a demonic entity actually lives inside of a person. But when you see our mainstream media and you see politicians and you see one world religions popping up and fake revivals, it's, it's no, I mean, you see the fruit, right, of the tree and the fruit's evil. And you're like, you're calling the evil out and they lash out at you because you're calling out the evil. Some ministries, they've been calling out that fake revival over in, uh, um, over in Ohio, were literally like being threatened, physically threatened by people. You better shut up and like threatening, you know. Does that sound like that comes from God? If you're really a true born again Christian, you're not gonna go around threatening people calling them names, calling them idiots and four letter words and all that stuff. So what I'm telling you guys, this is very important to remember as we're reading these signs in Revelation 12 is that evil spirits, whether it's King Gog, a fallen angel or a demon, which Jesus was casting demons out of people, they're living inside of people or they manipulate people's mind. If you need more Bible evidence of that, we will do a Bible study on another day and I'll take you to the book of Kings, and we will read about how King Ahab was killed. And there's this big revelation, okay? <laughs> Not the book of Revelation, but there's a revelation about what was happening in heaven, in the host of heaven, and God was having a conversation with the host of heaven. And you're gonna get a, an eye opener about how spirits manipulate people on the earth, okay? So just so that you understand, I hope that people remember this part of the video is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against powers, principalities, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And those are military ranks, by the way. So rank one, rank two, rank three, like in a military. And obviously the red dragon is at the very top of his military, okay? So that's what God's angels are doing. When we pray before the kingdom of, of God, right? When we're praying before his throne, our prayers go up to heaven. And the, that changes the atmosphere when we pray, all right? Not when we're being led on a wrong foundation like some of these movements that are going on, no. When we're in scripture and we know how to pray, there's some people that are really good prayer warriors, guys. I've met them before. They know how to pray. And woo hoo you don't need a pope, you don't need a priest, you don't need, um, you don't need that guy, uh, what's his name? 
Rick Warren. You don't need any of those people for that. You, you, look, if you know the scriptures and you quote scripture to God in your prayer, prayer life, if you're quoting scriptures back up to the Lord, it's powerful. <laughs> That's powerful. I'm telling you, that's when you're getting in the sweet spot. Not only that, it's sometimes when you deprive yourself, your body of food. And God, God talks about fasting. Jesus talks about fasting. Very powerful stuff. You want to get heaven to move on your behalf. You want to get uh, this nation to turn around for God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, I will heal their land. Okay? And sometimes some of these Prayer warriors are incredible people. Like, I pray. I know how to pray pretty good. I'm not an amateur, but I mean, there's some people that are just on another level on prayer. And that's how that's how God moves, guys. So, let's keep going. I'm going to read some more here, okay? Um, let me read verse um, 6 of Revelation 12. Then the woman who is Israel fled into the wilderness where she was, she has a place prepared by God, that's Selah Petra, that's Jordan, modern day Jordan, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. So it's almost three and a half years, basically. Okay. Satan thrown out of heaven. Here we go. Now, I want people to understand something. This Revelation chapter 12 sign that happened in 2017 is a sign God telling God telling humanity that time is is running out on this earth. It's a sign. Whether people want to pay attention to the signs or they just choose to ignore the signs is is up to the individual person. And I don't know that ministries or Christians talk about the signs all that much. You know, like they do, but they don't say, "Hey, look, here is the sign we're reading in Revelation 12 and it happened September of 2017." And people are like, what do you mean, David? What happened in 2017? The stars lined up to shape the shape, the woman and the dragon and everything. There's, there's, what I'll do for you, if you guys want me to, is I'll show you the constellation that they took. And this is public knowledge. It's not a tinfoil thing. Like you can see how it, it lines up. It looks exactly like what's being described here. It's a great, God calls it a great sign. It's a great sign for humanity saying, look, Satan's going to start getting busy now. Because sin is rampant all over the world and I'm angry. That's what God's telling the world. I'm not happy. And Satan is like, okay, I'm loosening the leash on the devil. And he's coming down with his angels, these UFOs and all this craziness. Why do you think it's so crazy in 2023, guys? Because of the Revelation 12 sign. Because it's a sign that Satan and evil is going to get worse and worse. That's really what we're reading here. Okay, now... <clears throat> Okay, let me uh, let me keep going. Okay, now war broke out in heaven. Okay, this is this is really to me uh, what's happening right now. There's war going on in heaven to this very day, in this very minute, in this very hour. There's war going on in heaven, and this I'll tell you what what's going to end up happening here. Okay, this war in heaven is breaking out. It's happening right now, just so that you understand. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to give you my analysis. Whether my analysis is right or not, people can agree or, or disagree, but this is what I feel like God's showing me personally, okay? War broke out in heaven. Michael, the archangel Michael, who is assigned to protect Israel, by the way, that's his assignment. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Now, just so that you understand, this is not a fight that just happens in 24 hours or in a week. They're literally like fighting right now. And this war that's going on is, is going to have a collimation to it. Okay. And it says here, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. What do you think we're seeing? Deception. The body of Christ fighting with each other and fake Christians fighting with the body of Christ. And Laodicean Christians fighting with the body of Christ, you know, because Satan is the great deceiver. And that's what we're, that's what we're actually going, again, going back to the fallen angels, going back to the demons. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. What we are seeing is a manifestation of the, of the war that's going on in heaven right now. So like you see the lies, you see the evil, you see 
murder, you see you know, like drugs, the pharmacia. I read an article from Now the End Begins this morning about how it's called Tranq, a, a, a very bad drug that they're peddling in all these Democrat and tropical cities. And it's causing people, the homeless and illegal immigrants that are living there, they're turning into like, I don't wanna say zombies, but they're just like, this drug is deadly, okay? This is Satan stuff. This is this is the battle that you're we're reading. This is what we're living it right now. We're living this battle right now that you that I'm reading to you. People like me and people that are have stronger ministries, much stronger ministries than me and other Christians that are really walking close to the Lord. We're all in this fight together, and we have God and His angels and the Holy Spirit are helping us. Satan and his fallen angels are helping people with the spirit of antichrist in them, the, the, the left, the Democrats. Sorry, Democrats. I mean, if you want to get, get on board, I'm not going to say I'm a Republican. I'm going to say I'm a Bible-believing Christian right now. Ditch, ditch that evil, wicked party. Your party has been hijacked by Satan. Get out of it. Get away from it. Move away. Come to Jesus Christ and get born again so that you don't get left behind. All right, so here's what happens. Now, this is, this is fast forward. This has not happened yet. The battle is raging right now, okay? The battle is raging in this, what I just read to you, where it's happening right now as we speak, and it's going to continue after, even after the rapture of the church. This battle is going to keep going on until, until Michael and his angels, um, and the Lord's got a date for that, a date. They're going to prevail over Satan and his angels, and guess what's going to happen? Satan is going to be cast down to the earth. We're going to read that in a minute. But here's what we're saying in heaven, ladies and gentlemen. Then I heard a voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ have come. The accuser of our brethren who accused them, okay, who Satan's accusing you and me constantly, day and night before God has been cast down. And, and they, these are the tribulation saints, okay? This is not the church. This is the tribulation saints. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives even unto the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the seal, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, I'm going to talk about this, okay? I'm going to elaborate on this in a minute. When the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, which is Israel, who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times half a time. That's three and a half years from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, Satan's trying every single thing that he can, ladies and gentlemen, to exterminate Israel. Why does he hate Israel so much? Because they're the ones that gave us the word of God. Don't even let one ounce or one shred of anti-Semitism live inside of you guys. God loves Israel. Doesn't matter if they're in idolatry, if they're in rebellion or what's going on. He has a covenant with Abraham. I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. Never, never, never curse Israel. Never. Look, we see a lot of stupid things we're doing. Okay, I get it. But you want to know how many stupid things we're doing in our country too? You know, just don't let any anti-Semitism live inside of you. It's, it's from the pit of hell. Okay, just so that you understand. But Satan is trying to exterminate Israel because of, you know, he hates the fact that Jesus came and died for the sins of the world. He wants to kill them. Okay. Wayne, um, uh, Wayne says, absolutely, I said before, the devil is running rampant. You have said that, Wayne. I remember that. And you're absolutely right, sir. He is. He's, he is. Well, but here's the crazy thing. You know, what was it? There was a saying, I guess it was, um, I don't, I have not let a, a lot read, sorry. I have not read a lot of writings from Peter Ruckman. Um, I have read some, but Ruckman had a statement and he said one time, he said that, the Bible, um, it's not hard. I think he said it's not hard to read, but it's hard, hard to believe. It's because w what I mean by that is like in this passage in Revelation chapter 12, it literally says that Satan is thrown down to the earth and he's angry. So 
Is he, is he going to look like a Godzilla type of thing? Or, I mean, we can't see him right now, right? Because he's not thrown down to the earth yet. When he gets thrown down to the earth, what's that going to look like? The Bible says he's going to pursue the woman. That's Israel. So, you know, take that, take that interpretation as you will, but could he physically manifest himself um, to the world when he's thrown down? I would say that's a great possibility. It's a great possibility because these fallen angels are manifesting themselves a lot. UFOs, they've been doing it for a long time, right? So when he's cast down to the earth, his time is very short. So it's like there's no more playing around. He's just going to try to devour as much as he can, especially Israel, okay? And, and obviously tribulation saints that refuse the mark of the beast, of the Antichrist. Um, now let's read verse 15. So the... Oh, I'm sorry, let's read verse 16. Now, God is going to stop Satan from drowning his people, okay, with the, with the water. He's going to open up the earth. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Why do they have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Because those two witnesses, because of those two witnesses and the 144,000 that have been um, uh, preaching the uh, life-saving gospel to the world during that time. The church is not on the earth in this area of scripture, guys. We're gone. It's the 144,000 and the Jewish witness. And the witnesses were, were killed by the Antichrist, by the way. And... Um, but let's, let's do this. Okay, so we're done with Revelation 12. I think I've made my point here. I want to read something to you. Um, let me do this. Let me pull it up here. This is kind of important to me because we're seeing so much deception and people are just getting so triggered, you know, about you're not allowed to question anything when you see a movement going on and, you know, you're... you're you're evil, you're wicked, you know, you don't know what's going on, you're stupid, you know. Um, real revival, ladies and gentlemen, it comes from the Word of God, and there's a, there's a secret ingredient to revival. And I'm going to read some scriptures to you about what true revival really looks like. Um, James chapter 4 verse 8 says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. This is not David Brooks saying this, okay? This is James saying this. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 1 John 1, 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um... Let me keep going here. I want to look at one more here. I had it earlier. I just want to... Okay. Second. Um, Mark 1, 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. I mentioned that the other day. So like, can revival happen? Is it too late for, let's, let's just ask that question. Is, re, is revival too late for the world? No, it's not too late for the world. Revival is not too late. What, will, what would revival look like? Revival would look exactly like it says, Jesus mentioned, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. You can't just start a worship service and call out on Jesus because we don't know which Jesus that we're worshiping. I mentioned there is many, what, what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 24? That there would be many people coming in his name, many false prophets and false Christs saying, I, I'm here, I'm here, I'm there. And he said, don't believe it, you know? And so, yeah, Deb, it's, it's about repentance and going into the scriptures and believing the gospel. But you cannot, 
What is the gospel? The gospel is what Jesus did for us on the cross. He, he, he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. Believing in Jesus Christ is all it really takes, guys. But the author of the one who orchestrated salvation for us also says that we're sinners. And we need to repent of those sins. What does that mean? Does it mean that we're just going to be able to turn sin off on a dime and we won't sin anymore? It means that we're having a change of mind. It means that we understand that we cannot make it without Jesus. We have to have a, an advocate before the Father. Jesus has a message for the one world Chrislam religion. You guys are a bunch of thieves and robbers. You're trying to help people go to heaven uh, another way other than Jesus Christ. And he calls you a thief and a robber. That's in scripture. There is no way to heaven, ladies and gentlemen, except through Jesus alone. There's no Muslim, there's no Roman, Roman Catholicism, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about works. It's all about works and we don't pray to Mary, okay? I'm sorry that we don't worship statues and all of those things that God says they can't see and you know they're made of stone. We don't worship idols. We worship our Lord and Savior who's risen, he's alive and he's coming back. And, but what we need to do and I, I hope that there's somebody out there that's been watching this Asbury anomaly and some of these other movements that are going on around the world that maybe this one world religion orchestrated. It's looking like they did because Rick Warren and all those people are behind the Asbury, um, the Pope and all. You know, it's about repentance and learning that you're a sinner. You don't get comfortable with your sin. You will never be comfortable with your sin. I'm not comfortable with my sin. I'm not comfortable with mine. And I'm not better than anybody else, but I, I understand when the Holy Spirit moves into me that I am a work in progress. I'm not perfect, but I, I repent as often as I, I can. And I ask the Lord to forgive me my sins. It has nothing to do with my salvation. I'm sealed and saved to the day of redemption. But at the same time, I don't want my relationship with God being broken either. Like when I do things that are not pleasing to Him, I, I don't want to just keep him on a shelf and not pray because I'm in the wrong about something, right? I want to reconcile myself to the Lord. That's a message for the body of Christ. And we need to continually work on that every day. And we need to work on it every single day, including me, you know? And I think that's all I've got for you guys. I hope this was a, a study that maybe was an angle you haven't seen before. I hope so. Um, but I may double back on it later because we're seeing a lot of signs all over the world right now. There's signs, I mean, there's war, rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquakes. There's signs in the sun, there's signs in the moon. We had a big piece of the sun come off recently. That's a sign, signs in the sun. Um, there's signs in the moon. We had an eclipse over Israel that nobody saw coming a day before the grand opening of the one world religion and in the stars. Okay guys, so that's it. Share this if you feel led to do so. If not, it's okay. I always say that. And I appreciate everybody that watches these videos. I mean, I'm very thankful to the group, Blood, Bot, and Born Again, and Ministries. Um, if you're watching this video on YouTube, um, like and subscribe for me. Just help me build my audience back up. I had a pretty good audience and I got censored, you know, so I had to start, <laughs> I had to start over again. So I don't have a lot of subscribers on my YouTube channel. I'm kind of starting over, but if you subscribe for me, that helps me out a lot because I just want to get the word out and get the gospel out to people. You're welcome, Wayne. And uh, God bless everybody tonight, okay? I will see you in Revelation chapter 13 very soon. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. And I'll see you again in the next video.